of the defense. Four fouls on Horston. Sends Copper back to the line. Upcoming WNBA National TV schedule Tuesday. Phoenix will be hosting Liberty. That'll be a lot of fun at 10 Eastern on CBS Sports Network. Amazon on Thursday has the Sparks and Liberty. Ion doubleheader Friday. Indy at Atlanta and Connecticut at Vegas. Go to the WNBA app or WNBA.com to get up-to-date information on the schedules. So much great basketball happening right now in the WNBA. So get your lead pass. Get your schedule, get your tickets. W is up. Jewel in and out. Got bumped out there by Copper. A very frustrating day for Jewel Lloyd. 0 for 6 from 3. You're talking about the WNBA's leading scorer just a season ago. And again, you have to credit Phoenix. They have done an excellent job on the defensive end. Hey, Kyle gets another one, Pam. Holly and Copper with the chance for another 30-point play. It would be her, or 30-point game, pardon me. That'd be a big play, right? That sounds that, about right. That would be history or something. But it's the blow by. Right. Going baseline, just able to slither her way past the defense and find an angle to the basket. Copper's fifth 30-point game this year. One more than Asia Wilson, so she leads the league in that category. What a game. Copper with 30, BG with 28, combining for 58 points as they pull away with a minute 27 left to go. And I believe we said this earlier on, but before this year, Kalia Copper had only had one 30-point game in her career and now has five just this season. Kalia Copper is showing the world why she is one of the best players in this league. And it's the versatility for me, getting to the rim off of the bounce, just finding an angle with her athleticism so shifty around the rim. The three-point bucket where the arsenal has grown in recent years of her career, the confidence in doing that, the hesitation in just getting to the cup. What can she not do? Her full arsenal on display today. And we talked to Copper before the game. Here's a kid who went to Rutgers, has been in Washington, Chicago. And she said her mindset before was West Coast teams don't call me when it came to free agency. She didn't consider herself to be a West Coast kind of kid. But oh my goodness, things are working out well here in Phoenix. I know it's not on the coast, but it's very far west. Yeah, she said, don't even call me West Coast <laughs> in free agency because I'm staying out east. But the West has been a good look. And Kalia said she wanted to come and play for this Phoenix organization because she wanted to be treated like a pro. And that's exactly what she's been able to do is just focus on basketball. She said, oh, everything's set up for me. She said, I forgot to cook breakfast this morning and I get to the arena, they've already got food yeah. for me. It's the little things that she said she really appreciates on this journey. Diggins Smith not going down without a fight. Sale cut the lead to six twice here in the fourth quarter. Sky 10 over 14 coming in the fourth as we hit one minute to go. Knocked away by Lloyd momentarily. And then stripped by Horston. Hopper ran into Lloyd and got called for that foul. Just a second on Copper. Fifth team foul, so Seattle is in the penalty. As good as Seattle's defense has been in stretches this season, that's been the anchor to their success. Aliyah Copper and Brittany Griner have presented quite the challenge today. Yeah, what a difference again. This is a team that won only nine games last year. They were dead last in the WNBA. They went through a coaching change, some turmoil, but some big off-season pickups for them. And they are 
about to get to seven and seven. Seattle would drop to nine and five. Both teams with big games on the horizon. The Liberty come here day after to tomorrow to take day after tomorrow to take on Phoenix, while Seattle goes to Vegas to finish up their road trip. It's cloud at the line. And after this road trip is over, Seattle will have a WNBA record nine game homestand. Wow. That will take them almost up to the Olympic break. They'll finish at LA and then we'll all get that five week Olympic break. Phoenix 18 of 19 from the line. That certainly has helped. But you're, you're talking about the big games for Copper and Griner combining for 58 points. Yeah, that five for 25 from three point land for Seattle is really what hurt them offensively. I felt like they settled too often for the three early. Those are shots you hope will fall as the season goes on. Did not happen today and has not happened for them consistently so far. Now the fans in Phoenix start to celebrate another great crowd on hand. And the Pride Day celebration here in Phoenix. And what a display. The Mercury never trailed in this game. They led from start to finish. Horston gets the basket and was fouled with just over 12 seconds left to go. Neka Ogumike with 15 points to lead the way for Seattle. Cloud has just fouled out. Does so with three points. All of them from the line, but gets a nice ovation, had eight assists and five rebounds. And did what she had to do and what she's always done as a floor general in 30 minutes of play. She ran the team, ran the offense, made sure everyone gets where they needed to be, made defensive plays when she needed to. What's not to love about Natasha Cloud? And Coach Tibbetts talked about provide the energy and competitive spirit she brought to the team but it was Cock Hopper and BG doing most of the damage today as Phoenix takes it 87 to 78. Diana Taurasi has just won her 300th game. Only Sue Bird and Lindsey Whalen have been in more winning games. The record will continue to come for Diana Taurasi as she will go to her unprecedented sixth straight Olympics with an opportunity for six gold, but the White Mamba still kicking. Absolutely. So Phoenix gets to 500 with the victory. Seattle 